Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll be going through how I created this malevolent birch character. If you're looking to recreate this look or even just wanted to see the process then just keep watching. I started by gluing my eyebrows down, brushing them in an upward direction using adhesive, and then applied Prosade over them to smooth the area further. Once it's dried, I applied no color powder to remove any stickiness. Now for a base color. I applied white Wolf FX body paint with a sea sponge. I'm not trying for a solid color, so I'm allowing some of my skin to still show. Now I start layering Skin Illustrator in white. The great part about this makeup is it's translucent, so it gives me a little more control for coverage. I had to paint my ears black really quick because they did kind of peek out of certain areas on the headpiece. I spattered some white all over just in case there was any leftover brush strokes. Time for the headpiece. I created this using scrapbook paper and latex that I built on a head form. I'm using Telesis adhesive to glue down the edges, but you could use Prosade or Spirit Gum, whatever you have handy. Now because I made this on a head form, the edges aren't that great. So I'm taking a little thickened Prosade to smooth the transition into my skin. Also sponging some Prosade around the edges really help blend it in. Once it's fully dry, you wanna make sure you powder the edges really good. Now that I'm happier with how it blends into the skin, I'm gonna go ahead and take that sea sponge and that white body paint and stipple over the area that I haven't painted yet. I also went over it with the white skin illustrator again and spattering a gray color all over myself. This particular color is soot by Skin Illustrator, but you could use a body paint and it would work just as well. Now I'm following that with Skin Illustrator colored thin, which is basically a warm brown. I wanted to get some more textures, so I took a torn makeup sponge in that gray color and stippled it all over. Now I'm taking that same makeup sponge, but this time with white, and I'm using it to highlight certain areas of my face and bone structure. For this part, I'm airbrushing Skin Illustrator soot into the hollows of the cheeks and the jawline. Also spraying some down the side of the nose. I also wanna add some depth to where it's supposed to look as if my skin is peeling. All these effects can easily be achieved with a brush and some gray powder, but I just tend to favor my airbrush. Now I'm shading around my collarbones because I wanted this character to look very malnourished and emaciated. I'm going over areas multiple times to slowly build up the depth. So birch trees are known for having horizontal lines across the bark, but I felt like for this character that might look a little too clunky. So on the face, I kind of followed the shape going downward. Because I wanted this to look more organic, I made sure that none of the lines were too straight. So I went over them multiple times and did a light squiggle. From my neck down, I started doing the lines horizontal, more like a traditional birch. I'm skipping around a lot, going back and forth, because I don't want to cover myself in these gray lines, because I will go back with a brown. With a mixture of gray and green, I'm going through and making tears in the bark. I'm painting darker on the outer edges than I do in the center. This will give it more depth and make it more 3D. I want the inside of these tears to have a bit of texture, so I'm going in and wiggling the brush around to give it some breakup. Now I'm adding more of those striations, but this time I'm using a brown. The brown striations I kept pretty light to keep them subtle compared to the gray ones we applied earlier. In designing this character, I pictured her having such a rage that it would burn from the inside. So I started this internal fire with using a yellow base. 
and I'm kind of stippling it around so it looks more like a crackling fire underneath. Now with the gray, I'm trying to give the appearance that the bark has slowly burned away. I'm also creating some darker gray areas so it looks like different stages of burn. With the black, I'm now creating a really charred area, so I'm limiting it to closer to the fire. I start to add orange to the outer edges of the yellow and slowly bringing them inward so it looks like a crackling fire. I go back in with the yellow towards the center to brighten it up. With a mixture of white and yellow, I stipple around the center to give it some highlight. With pure white, I go in and adds a few highlights here and there to the tears and the bark. I then decided to go in with more black around the burning fire to really make it pop. Then I go around the tears and add some of the black to give it a little depth in the corners. So I wanted to give that same ripped bark effect on the lip and the eyes, so I'm going in with that same green and gray mixture color. Now going in and darkening the edges so that it has that same 3D appearance. I wanted to add a few more shadows, so I grabbed my airbrush again with the gray and just kind of shade it around these tears so it looks more as if the bark is peeling upward. Now with the white, I just do little spots on the tears. I did some light squiggling over my collarbones and my cheekbones just to kind of give more of a highlight. And since I was liking where it was going, I decided to just add some more highlights just to give the character a little more pop. Also started adding some white striations all over this way so it just looks like some areas were raised just giving it a little organic texture. Now I'm applying these foam latex vines. I'm adhering them in small sections at a time so that I can control where they go on my skin. So to further the illusion of the burning fire in the chest, I go and do little spots of orange and yellow on the vines and the thorns. Now I'm applying my spikes. These are made out of two-part urethane, but you could easily make some with some Sculpey. Now I start adding that glow effect with the orange and yellow onto my collarbones, my neck, and I'm even gonna bring it up to my face. Now that my contacts are in, I can go ahead and clean up around my eyes. I bring the white all up to my lash line and then go in with that green-gray color. Also now I can finish my eyelids. I am using Skin Illustrator for this step, so a good tip if you do use it is to make sure you powder it before you open your eyes or the color will stick. Then I start adding the dark tones to get that 3D effect and give it some depth. Adding a little more white into the inner corners of my eyelids. And then I also take that white and highlight my cupid's bow just a touch. Okay. 
Now I go in with a white eyeliner pencil and color in my waterline. I'm going to leave the section where the tear meets my eye to add black. I'm adding the last few spikes to my face. I put two-way tape on these so that I can just stick and go and not have to go back and forth between glue and putting spikes down. And that's the finished look. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you're new to my channel, be sure to click that subscribe button. And if you're familiar with my channel, I hope you enjoyed this new voiceover format. I do plan on maintaining it for my future videos. Don't forget to click that like button and I can't wait to show you my next creation.